today what I want to do is finally get to deal with plotting. And I think the cleanest way for us to do this is for each student to actually download what's called the printer driver for that plotter onto their computer. So you can just plug it in, your computer will know what's there and it'll just work. And the, the easiest way to get that, easiest way to find it is just uh, Google uh, download HPT250 driver. And that should take you pretty much right to this page here. I'm going to do it here on this computer too. Uh, I accept, sure. So I'm going to pick this, uh, scroll down here to driver pack one. This, this opens and closes that way. Go down to driver one, and then I have to widen the window a little bit to see everything. Uh, it's, it's this guy right here. And you can, you know, if, if you were at home and in charge of maintaining this, you could down a, a whole lot of other um, options, but this is the this is the smallest and, and all we need to have on our computers. This is 8.7 megabytes, so I'll download that. And then open file. And it's, it's just that quick. And now when you plug the printer's USB cable into your laptop, the laptop will recognize it and add it to your list of available printers. I put the basic procedures for printing from Acrobat or a browser on the wall above the plotter. And if we find a better way, I'll just print it back up here again. And basically we can print from a browser or we can print from Acrobat. And the, the major deal is not to print directly from Revit or from Photoshop. Uh, because we don't, we don't want to start running test prints on this with all the ink and all the paper. So um, make a PDF, print a, print a PDF, which will usually then open it in Acrobat, and you can print it from Acrobat. That, to me, that's the cleanest, the cleanest way. And the, there are only really two, different, two differences in the whole way to do this. Um, if you start Chrome, you use Control-Shift-P to print. And if you use Acrobat, it's just Control P. So I just use Acrobat because that's what I, I think of. Um, and then we need to set uh, a page size, which the biggest this will do is 24 by 36, which is a standard architectural D sized. Actually, it will do 24 inches by any length, but we'll get to that at a later date. Number of copies, which page, that kind of thing. Um, one thing we have in Revit, let's say you're printing your first, second, and third floor plans. We can print them all to one PDF or to th separate PDFs. And that's just your, your choice of how you want to do that. Um, does your, a couple of things. It just lets you ability to preview it. Like, oh, I forgot to do it in color or uh, the scale is wrong or something like that. And sort of use that as your test print. Use PDF as your, uh, you know, just seeing how, how it's going to work. One thing to bear in mind is when we're printing to scale, you know, we want, we want to be able to measure our final print with the ruler. And that's, you know, a three foot door or whatever it happens to be. When we're creating the print from Revit to PDF, we need to say scale at 100%. So, it's, you know, PDF likes to shrink stuff um, when, it, when it's printing just to make it all fit. We don't want it to fit. We want it to be exactly the size that we know. And then we're, when we're printing from the PDF to the printer, we also want to say print at 100%, scale at 100%, not, not to fit. Because um, it'll it'll shrink it down, and then something you know there's a three foot door, and it ends up being two foot ten or something, and it's just very confusing. So we try to keep that all the way through. How many people are doing like real staircases coming up from their first floor, or pretty much all the groups doing something like that? Okay, well what I like to cover is we'll start with straight stairs, and then curved stairs, and then stairs of any shape that you want. Start out curved, end up straight, go in different directions. Anything you want to draw, we can turn into a staircase. And I'm not going to use the base model right now. I'm just going to start an empty file just to practice in so we don't have to uh, mess anything up. And I'm just going to use my uh, residential or just this default template, I guess, for demonstration purposes. What's what's our floor to floor height? Uh, first floor to second floor. Anybody know? Okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, let me just go open that. We might as well start with something uh, something close. Okay. So from level one to level two is fourteen ten. Just so, just so we know. I'm going to close out uh, that. I'm just in this drawing here. 
So I'm going to make my level two here be 1410. So what we do here will be something like what you're doing in your models. Uh, be close to what you guys are going to be working with. 1410, okay. So first floor to second floor. Level one to level two. And one of the reasons I'm doing this in another model is that I don't want to have, I don't want to have floors and columns and stuff getting in the way. I just Let's definitely do this together and see where the problems show up. Uh, I'm going to skip ramps. We did them in, back in the fall talking about accessibility. Um, and they're, if you can do stairs, you can do a ramp. Uh, reviewing on here, the accessibility standards, the, the, the standard stair rivets set up to do is pretty much the steepest one that the ADA code permits, which is a 7-inch riser and an 11-inch tread. That's going to be a little steep for sort of a gracious getting up to your second floor. So I'm going to suggest we change our stair from a 7-inch riser and 11-inch tread to like a 6-inch riser and a 12-inch tread, which is a, a much more gentle thing. So, But instead of changing this one, like anything in, in Revit, I'm just going to go to Edit Type and Duplicate. And I'm going to change a new name to 6-inch maximum riser and a 12-inch tread. change the name, and then change the actual uh, dimensions that Revit will use to calculate it. And something else to bear in mind, because this is over 12 feet from floor to floor, what do we say it was? 1410? We're required to have a landing. The, the most you can have is 12 feet rise before you have a landing. So we're going to have to put a landing in here somewhere. But let's look at just what a straight a straight stair uh, going from level one to level two, 14 foot 10. You can see that right here is going to be. So this this is this is just your first floor when going up to the second floor. And I think two, three, and four are, are about 14 feet. Working with an assembled stair, and, and that's the kind that's put together out of out of wood and treads and stuff, not a big monolithic concrete one. We'll, we'll get to that. We're going to create this just by a run. And I'm just going to say, just start it here and, and take it up that way as far as it can go. And you notice when I, when I get there, I'll say, OK. I can select it. And when we said 6-inch maximum riser, that wasn't saying I have a 6-inch riser, just that's the maximum allowable. Revit's actually done the calculations to realize that the minimum number of risers we can get in there, uh, they're actually going to be 5 and 239, 256, you know, they're, which we don't have to worry about, and the stair guys, the stair guys will. You know, they'll, they'll round it off to the earth eighth of an inch or something, rather. So that, that's what that looks like. Let me get to a view, 3D view. Oh, there we go. And to be able to see the plan and the 3D at the same time, I'm going to use a WT, which is the shortcut for Windows, tile the windows. So I can see the, the 3D stair as well as the, the plan view. Let's talk about the display of this a little bit. Um, th th this is an awfully busy looking stair. Uh, in terms of lots of extra lines, especially up, up above the cut line. You know, this, this cuts the stair at about four feet, and we just see the, the hidden lines for the stuff that is above. And I would like to get rid of a bunch of that uh, stuff. So in this view, I, specifically, I would like to get rid of, well, this right here, the, the first line is the actual edge of the tread, which is what I'm interested in. Uh, the second dashed line is where the riser comes in, uh, comes up to that a little farther back. I would like to turn off those riser lines. And the way we do that for this view is over in visibility graphics to scroll down to stairs, open that up, and turn off riser lines and then apply. And hitting apply lets us see the effect of it without actually uh, having to, you know, this, this dialog disappear. Uh, and furthermore, for the parts that are above the cut line, I would like to get rid of the riser lines as well. So over here in stairs, we have the lines that are above the cut line. 
And I would like to turn off these riser lines as well. So above riser lines, uncheck those and apply. And this first, this first line, this let's say go from this side. The outside line is the uh, outline of the staircase. The next two lines are the two sides of the railing going up above the cut line. And I, I that's just visually, you know, more than we need to deal with here. So again, in the visibility graphics, I'm going to slide up to railings, open that up. And for the railings, I'm just going to turn off the display of anything above the cut line. So above all these three, just turn off. And the last thing I see here is that still leaves me with this double line here, which is more than I really want. And it turns out that what what these two represent is, is like the two by 12 that's going up uh, supporting the stairs. So I, I wanna go back down to stairs again and turn off uh, supports above the cut line. So basically everything, well, not everything, but I'm gonna turn those off and say apply. And now I have a much cleaner, I'll say okay, uh, a much cleaner way of dealing with, with staircases in this view. Now to repeat one thing about doing stairs that have landings in them, I'm gonna indicate four points to put in a single landing. Uh, one will be here to indicate the beginning of the first run. The second will be here to say, stop the first run and start the landing. The third will be here to end the landing and start the second run of stairs. And the fourth will be out here to end the second run and end the whole staircase. So let's just look uh, briefly at that. So again, if we're doing a stair going uh, straight up, but this time putting a landing in, we can see we're going we're to have 30 treads, uh, 30 risers, I guess. And as you start creating this stair, Revit will be telling you how many have been created at this point. And I'm just going to get up to the point where I've got, I've created 15 and there are 15 remaining. Click, and then I'll come up here a couple of feet and and do the rest. And then uh, Revit knows how many more to put in there to get up to the, the 1410. And see what that looks like, say, okay. Uh, we can erase the uh, railings. We can put it back on later, but so you can see what that looks like. Uh, let's just look at uh, landings again. If I wanted to do a what's called a dog leg stair, which goes in one direction to a landing and then comes back in the same direction, that stair. We'll use these same things. Uh, we'll go up to here, say 15, uh, and that's where that run ends. Then the next one will come straight over this way click and come back down this way. And you'll notice that Revit has added the landing all by itself. We don't have to model that separately. So that's that's that look. So those are all straight ones. If we go to stair with this uh, central ends spiral, it's it, it only has one way to draw these which you can see in the little instructional video. Which is to in indicate a center point, the center of the arc, uh, and then a start point and a finish point. To begin with, let's just see what it lo looks like uh, just to eyeball it. And something I learned in my in my research last night was when, when you're doing a, 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 an arc stair, you need to check this thing called keep concentric. And that will keep a smooth spiral a smooth arc from the from the top to the bottom. Otherwise, if you hit a landing, it, things go off in all different directions. So we'll, we'll check that, keep concentric. And then I'm just gonna guess if I use this as my center point and then move over, you can see what this is starting to look like as I uh, make the radius smaller, nearly comes around to tight, tighten on itself. If I move that back, you know, I can get to here and get pretty much like a 90 degree stair. And I'll just do that. So that looks like 18 foot, let's just say 18 feet. And then I can just click there and then drag up until Revit makes my the stair come up to the top. 
and it thinks a little bit, and it's got to put the uh, railing on, which are pretty nice. You know, these are nice, nice smooth helical shapes. To create these with a landing, it's exactly the same process as for the straight stair. We've got a stair arc. Keep concentric. I'll, I'll do the same, uh, the same 18 feet, and see where we get. So 18. So I'll go up my. So I've created 15 risers. Uh, and you can see as I move, I move the cursor along the arc there. If I if I drop it down, it's going to turn into a straight one. But if I keep the cursor on the arc, it can give me a um, a landing, and then finish out the stairs. Okay, so this is a nice looking stair I just made, but it's with the landing, but it's too skinny. Now that we've got the basics of that stair, now we can start to we can start to mess with it. And one is just to make it wider. So these are three feet wide. What would you like? Six feet? Let's just say six feet. I'm going to select the stair that we've made and just go to edit stairs. And when it says stairs, it's thinking of each run as something we can do something separate to. So I'm going to pick this run. And then over here, we can change its width. This run changes width to six feet, which is an interesting looking stair. But what I really want to do is then select this run and change it also to six feet. And Revit smart enough to know to widen the landing uh, to, uh, to do those as well. And then it recalculates the railings. To change the up down direction of a stair, select it down here, one end to the other. At the top end will be the arrows at the, the arrows at the top. You can just flip it back and forth. While we're looking at these, we have a couple of choices of how to build the stairs. You know, since you guys are working in a concrete building, we can we can build this stair to look like it's made out of concrete instead of wood and planks, uh, because what we have right now, you know, is is just uh, wood wood stringers and and uh, and wood steps. Let's get back on top of things. But if we select the stair, we can change it from this assembled stair made up made up of pieces to a monolithic stair. Yeah, we'll say okay. At which point it start becoming looking more like something more maybe more fitting for your building. And then let's let's say I I pick this stair right here and wanted to make it wider, so I'll go to edit stairs, pick a run, make it six feet wide, pick this run, make it six feet wide. Okay, and then I want the bottom of this of the stair to flare out. Uh, that doesn't come built into Revit because it doesn't know what you want or what you might like. But if you remember in Revit, and maybe I haven't explained this fully enough, but it needs to be said, everything in a Revit model, everything 3D in a Revit model can ultimately be reduced to two-dimensional sketches. Remember every leg for a table started out as a square? And then got extruded. Uh, every tabletop got, you know, started out as an oval and got extruded. Whatever. Um, stairs are the same way. If we pick a staircase and go to Edit Stairs, and then pick this bottom run, I have the ability to convert this from something that lines that Revit is managing based upon width and tread depth and stuff to lines that we are responsible for: riser lines and the edges of the staircase so that we can put in whatever shape we want on this stair. And we do that by converting this, this run right here, which right now is still controlled by Revit over here in, in properties and stuff. And we're gonna convert it to a sketch-based stair, which will do whatever we tell it to do. And so I, I can't go back except with a lot of, you know, control Zs. I can't just pick it and say, no, I didn't mean that. I'll say, okay, close. Uh, and now that I have this bottom piece uh, converted into something that we're responsible for, we can then go to Edit Sketch, 
and you'll see that what we have here is three different kinds of lines. We've got the black ones that represent the, the risers where the level changes. We've got the green ones that control the outside edge of the staircase. And we've got this one up the middle, which is what's called the stair path. And we have to, since we're responsible for this, we need to tell, to tell Revit when we're asked to draw one, if we are to draw a line that goes from the first riser up to the top riser. And let's just say I wanna move, I want this line, the staircase just to flare out at the bottom. I'm gonna pick this green edge and just slide it out. And then simply extend my riser lines out to that. So the easiest way to do that is to use the trim extend multiple elements tool where I pick one thing and then pick the others that will be extended to it. So I'm gonna pick the green line and then sequentially just pick the, uh, the riser lines. Like that. That's all there is to it. And we can see the stair over here in the 3D view with the uh, proposed plan coming up. And I'll say OK. And OK a couple of times. And here's this. Uh, wider down there. To make that a little fancier, I might put like an S curve on the bottom of this one on the other side. Again, I'll select this run, edit stairs, pick it. It's already, this has already been converted to a sketch based run of stairs. So I can here, I can just go to edit sketch. And here, instead of this line, uh, I'm going to erase this entirely. Delete. And create a whole new uh, curved green line that will become the edge of this side of the staircase. And we haven't dealt with these yet, but that would have to be a boundary line. Pick boundary. And I'll come in. Uh, and I think I'll put a, a curve on there. I'll put a fillet with a radius of, I don't know, four feet or something on that. That's not very exciting. Let's do something different. I'm just going to put a, a, a curve that goes from there. To there, to there. So I'll be straight on one side and uh, curved on the other. And now I just need to tell Revit to extend the treads all the way out to that. So again, I'll pick the extend tool, the multiple extend tool. So I don't have to keep picking this guy select it once and then uh, multiple extend this. There we go. Maybe I can just grab them all at once. Yeah, I can grab them all at once. And if you if there's something wrong with this, like things don't meet at a corner or something, Revit will flag it and you have to figure out what to do with it. Uh, where the problem lies. Okay. Okay. So there's a stair that can do can do that. So pretty much anything you can do to the stair that isn't impossible by the laws of physics, um, we can we can work out to make make fit your space. There are only a couple of sort of code concerns. Wrote stairs can't narrow on the way down in the direction of egress. Uh, the landing has to be at least uh, at least three feet long. I think we got plenty there. I didn't measure it. I'll just save this as a file. Save as. Oh, you know, this is, let's let's do this. Uh, let's say that this is the stair that I want to I want to keep for my uh, building. For, for my uh, for my base model. I, I've worked out the the dimensions here in the um, in this view, and I want to 
I don't have to recreate it. I want it just I want it just like this. So this is a, a scratch uh, file. So I should just be able to open my base model because this will affect all the members of my team out of my box folder. Yeah, ignore, continue. Going to go to my level one. And then I'm going to just copy, copy and paste. I'm going to copy that stair from, from the file where it was made into my base model. So again, I'll, I'll use WT for window tile so we can see them both. I'll go pick this, use the copy to clipboard. Then I'll paste it, uh, I'll, let's say align to uh, selected levels, level one, okay. And I don't know where it'll come in at. Level one, level one. New construction. It's not there. Why isn't it there? It's supposed to be there. Let's do copy. Oh, I come over to here. Oh, maybe I didn't do that. Maybe I can get into this drawing to say modify, paste, select the levels. One. That's what happened. Uh, I pasted it back into this drawing, so there's probably two of them right there. So here's my here's my new staircase coming up in my base model, and I realized that I need to open up the floor in the second floor of the base model to be able to let people cl climb these staircases. So I go to my level two plan, and I can just see the top of that stair there. And opening a hole in the floor is just a matter of uh, tabbing till you get the floor, editing boundary. We'll draw a rectangle. Let's say down to there somewhere to be sure people don't bump their heads on the floor coming up. But we'll do that for the whole thing just so we can see it. So that will be the hole in my uh, in my second floor. Okay. Yeah. Detach. So there's that. And if I go back to the first floor, I'd like to have a better sense of where this is in my base model. So I'm going to I'm going to turn the uh, uh, some lines back on here to be able to see at least the outline of this at the first floor level. So base model, visibility graphics, stairs. See if I've done this right. Stairs. We'll turn on the outlines of the stair just to know where that is. I think that's a, a, a good way to do that. I think turning turning the tr the riser lines on there is not necessary. So if I want to see what this looks like from the first floor with the hole in the ceiling above. In the first floor plan, I'll go to view, 3D view, camera, come down here somewhere, look at that, and, and there's that going up. And uncheck far clip active. So we can get pretty, looks pretty good, yeah? One thing I do, I do wanna do is change this from the built in place from the constructed stair into the monolithic uh, concrete one, since I got a concrete building here. So I'm just gonna change its type from assembled stair to monolithic. Oh, I uh, can't, sorry, excuse me. I've, I've got monolithic already tied into uh, to a particular rise and, rise and run. Let's see what my options are. What I need to do is create a new type of monolithic stair in this model that has a six inch riser and a 12 inch tread that would take care of it. I, I think in, in terms of the these stairs that are already in your base model, uh, there's already one a monolithic stair with a six and a half inch riser. And I think probably just using that in, instead of copying one in from another file is, is gonna make the most sense. If you've, cre if you've um, erased the railings from stairs, as, as I have in this case, we can put them back on by drawing them. 
uh, where we want them, and then attaching them to this object, just sort of the way that we can attach uh, walls to a sloped roof, we can attach railings back down to a staircase. And that would happen this way, uh, architecture railing. And we're going to sketch uh, just sketch a path to see what's going on. Uh, in this case, with a line, a line architecture railing sketch path. There we go. So I'll come from here up to here. Change should be turned on from here to here and then up to there. And it, it will put the default um, railing type in. But it's down on the floor. Let's go to the 3D view. Wait a second. Go back to my camera view. Camera view. This one. It's down on the floor. What I want to do is attach this railing to this staircase. You know, they don't really know each other there yet. So we pick the railing, pick new host. Right now its host is the floor, or it actually is the level. Pick new host, pick the stair, and it'll climb right on up. And the cleanest way to get that for this curved area, instead of trying to duplicate the curve, we go level one, create railing, sketch path, and then I'm going to offset it from an existing line, or in this case, arc. Uh, I'm going to pick lines. Um, it asks me how far off of that line do you want the, uh, this. I'll pick this edge right here. How far off of that do you want the railing to go? So I'll pick this. I'll pick offset, let's just say six inches, just so we can see, uh, see that. And then as I Pick this line, I get a choice between which direction I want to go. I'll go to the inside, to the inside of that one, and to the inside of that one, and say OK. And you see that one is now drawn there on, on the floor plan level. I guess we can get rid of this. Oh. And then I'll attach this one to the staircase. Pick the railing, pick new host, pick stair. So that'll take a little uh, finagling to get uh, working just right, but that's essentially what we can end up with. And one question that comes up with stairs, especially in this place like this, where it's sort of a tall staircase, is this supposed to be like a grand entrance up to your restaurant? Is just just a way for people to get up to their rooms? Is this a service stair for, you know, the caterers to use or something rather? And think about whether, if, it, if it's something you're trying to invite people uh, to use, whether you want them to see this end on, would it be more gracious to see it from the side? Just sort of generate a couple of views and decide which is going to be the most, if you're trying to invite people up the staircase, what, what makes that, that good? Presumably seeing it coming in underneath the stair would not be particularly uh, ex exciting. Doesn't let you know what's, what awaits you above. I'd like to show you about drawing a, a completely custom stair where you don't use the basic Revit tools at all the Revit steer at all, but just draw it with lines from scratch. I'm going to go out to level one. And out here, uh, let me just see what this uh, sectional view here is like. I'm, again, I'm in the, in the base model, so this, everybody would inherit this. Let's create a section. Uh, across here. So here's where you come out of the existing one, you get to the edge of the, uh, of the concrete and then want to step down back to the um, site, the site model. So let's just do, uh, see how far that is. Okay, and even four feet, that's easy. So what I want to do is, is create a stair entirely from scratch that will be sort of a curved stair here, a sort of curved, uh, A strong curve here coming up to a nearly flat curve by the time we get up to the um, 
uh, get up to the, um, the floor slab. Well, I wasted a lot of time trying to create a stair that didn't work for unknown reasons, so ended up doing a simpler one that did work. Sketch. Riser. Arc. Just copying these a foot up at a time. Okay. Trim these. Stair path. Okay, well that one worked. And in the real world, I'd come back and straighten that top riser so it would fit against the platform. Okay, it's going backwards. Make it go up instead. Anyway, so there's that. So we can create these entirely from scratch, although you do so at your own peril, I guess. Okay, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about railings. Basically, anywhere somebody can fall more than 30 inches, you need a 42-inch guardrail. And then anytime people are going up and down stairs, uh, we need a 36-inch handrail. But there's two, two different things going on. Okay, well, let, let's look at a, a, a few of the options available with railings um, so that you'll, you'll have these available for you. Uh, and first of all, if we if we just look at the at the railings that come with Revit, by default, it puts up this one called a uh, rectangular handrail, and it's not a handrail. Uh, it's actually this is actually a guardrail. Uh, if we go to guardrail pipe, then weirdly we get one that is true guardrail height and has a a handrail on it. Uh, the the naming. The naming is not consistent with how it's understood, uh, at least in the ADA standards. But let's go back to this one. And I would like to make a new version of this. So we have a, a, a couple of components uh, that Revit knows as the, as the top rail. Collectively, these are balusters. We can have any number of what we call non-continuous rails, like handrails that aren't part of the structure of the whole assembly. And we have some options at the ends of things where a railing either ends or changes direction of what size a post we want to have there, regardless of what's happening everywhere else. So if we want to re redefine the existing rail that we have, I'm going to select this and create a new type, just so we don't mess up this one. Uh, edit type, duplicate, the old story. And we'll call it handrail, we'll actually call it guardrail. Guardrail with lower rail. Guardrail with lower rail. So first of all, as a guardrail, it needs to be 42 inches tall, not 36. So three feet six. So the top rail needs to be its top at, at three feet six inches. We'll leave that top rail as two by two inches. And we see there's nothing else involved here there, um, it, in terms of the rail itself. We'll say, okay, we get, and that gets taller because that's the only change we made. Then we'll pick this guard rail throw rail and edit type. And then we'll go into this rail structure, non-continuous, which is the one at the bottom. Uh, and, and you know, although they illustrate this uh, this rail with horizontal ones, you're not allowed to do that anymore as a guardrail because it, they're too easy to climb over. We don't want that to happen. So rail structure non-continuous, and we'll pick that. And right now there is no lower rail, so I'm going to say insert a new rail. And here we select this, and. Uh, we're going to call this bottom rail. And now its profile is its shape that's getting extruded along there. The top one is two by two inches. We'll make this one, I think, uh, uh, 
square hand drill, one inch square. Okay. Okay. So there that goes in. I'm going to erase this and look at this in an elevation view. At this point, I, I, I'm going to change this stair to the concrete type so we don't have all this uh, worry about this uh, coming in here. Okay, we don't care about that. So a couple of things here. One is I, I need to move this rail up, this bottom rail up, so that it doesn't, doesn't hit the stair. Pick the this, edit type, go to rail structure on continuous. And right now it's it's just uh, you know hitting the stair. We'll make this, this will be to the top of it. We'll make that four inches and see what happens. Fine. Okay, so that goes up. Now I would like to have every, I guess, 12th one of these come down to the ground. Let's say four feet, they're four inches apart. So that'd be, we'd have 11, 11 short guys and then a, a long one. And this gets a little tedious, but we say edit type. Uh, and then we do baluster placement. And you can see that here we have the, oh, let's drag this out a little bit. There, there's a, a, this regular baluster pattern just repeats a uh, three quarter inch square baluster uh, repeating every four inches. And it's going from the top rail down to the base, which is currently now, which is hosted by the stair. And actually, most of these, I would, if I want them hosted by the bottom rail, then they, then they look like this. So what I really want to have is, is uh, one of these, then 11 of the short guys, and then another long guy, and then uh, 11 short guys. And the way this comes about is edit type, baluster placement, So I'm going to select the one that's there and duplicate it 10 times, I guess. It's easy enough. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So I got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'll duplicate it again. No, uh, Control-Z, sorry. And then this first one I'll have going from the, from the host, whatever that is, which in this case is the stair to the top rail then 11 of them going from the bottom rail to the top rail. Apply. Okay. Apply. Okay. That's a little issue here. We couldn't get that whole bunch in there. So we have to go to edit type, baluster placement, and say if you've got space that's not filled up, uh, fill it with the, uh, just truncate the pattern. And it'll fill there in, you know, there, it starts from the bottoms. We have our 11 long one, 11 long one, 11 long one. And then it couldn't fit 11 in here, but it's got, it's got that much. I put a link on today's notes down here at the bottom of page two for a really complete thorough tutorial on adding railings by Paul Oban, who's, who's the master of all this. And that, interestingly, is like one of the chapters in a much longer one on LinkedIn that he has that is really the whole, uh, all of Revit. And I'm just saying I use this uh, particular you know, chapter, if you like, uh, for railings. That's all I have to present today.